right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Post-lunch, hopefully everybody got to sample all of the cuisines. I heard good things about the robotic pizza. The line was so long, though, I didn't even get a chance to try it. Um, tacos were great. Thank you guys very much. The fruit, all of the juices, the samples. So definitely, we'll have lots of food. Keep that going. Uh, we've got a bunch of great panels lined up for this afternoon. So definitely invite everyone to stay. Uh, enjoy themselves. We'll be having a closing uh, reception party this evening, 6 to 8 p.m. at Prank Bar. Um, and we'll be going all the way until then. So definitely don't be surprised if you start to see a lot of alcohol showing up in the next hour or two around the booths and the uh, exhibits. So we're going to have some fun on this panel. I'm really excited for this fireside chat. Safer roads for all. Um, so we're going to be chatting with two executives from Cambridge Mobile Telematics, sharing insights into how making roads and drivers safer is something we can and should build into today's technology. So I think this is a really cool topic, uh, driver safety, road safety, that we all care deeply about. Um, and I think a lot of the stats around it are quite astonishing. You know, the number of fatalities, the number of accidents. And I think what's cool to me is that there's so much technology out there available that can improve this. There's so many partnerships, and that's kind of what I'm excited to dig into today with my two participants. So we've got Ryan McMahon, who's Senior Vice President of Strategy and Corporate Development at Cambridge Mobile Telematics, and we've got Abby Buchibabu. She's Senior Director of Product Management at Cambridge Mobile Telematics. So uh, I'm going to give it to you, Ryan, to start and maybe give us a quick bio about yourself and what you're doing at CMT, and then we can move to Abby. Excellent. Thanks, Harry. And uh, what an amazing event here. So I'm Ryan McMahon. I run corporate development strategy and government affairs for Cambridge Mobile Telematics. We're a tech company that's based out of MIT. We were founded initially as uh, the first product was called Pothole Patrol. So we detected potholes for sensors before uh, smartphones. And today we work with 21 of the top 25 insurance carriers in the U.S., covering about 83% of the premium about $4 billion of discounts are given to drivers with our technology today. And we started expanding into the rideshare and gig space a couple of years ago. Cool. Thanks, Harry. And thanks for having us at Curbivore. It's my first time, super excited. Um, I'm Abby Buchibabu. I'm the Senior Director of Product at CMT. My focus is around improving driver and road safety um, in the gig market specifically for gig companies and for gig drivers. So I kind of wanted to put into context where we're at today when it comes to driver safety, road safety, because Brian, I feel like I've heard you speak before and heard you recite some interesting and sometimes scary, I guess you would even say stats. Um, so where do you sort of think we're at today when it comes to things like road fatalities, driver safety, road safety? Um, where, where, where are we at today? Yeah, the unfortunate story is the roads today are the worst we've had in decades uh, from a danger perspective. Relative to the number of fatalities, about 46,000 people die on the roads every year. That's about, to put that in perspective, that's about equal to breast cancer. And you think about the amount of awareness that happens with that, it's, it's, you know, it's equal relative to the, the, uh, the outcome. The challenge that comes in with road uh, safety is most trips end in a positive manner, right? Most trips, people get to where they're going, crashes happen irregularly, and fatalities even less than that. But what's happened over the last 10 years or so is the amount of crashes that have happened on our roads continue to increase. The behavior that's leading to that is what we do. So we are looking at the behaviors that drivers are engaging in and how that ultimately leads to crashes. And what I can tell you is about a third of all crashes that we measure, and we're measuring about a trillion data points a day, a third of all crashes, the driver's phone is in their hands at the time of the impact. And distracted driving is up at historic levels. It started, uh, it's been climbing every year since 2017. And uh, during the pandemic, it increased about 30% and it's stayed elevated since then. I mean, I feel like this is one of those things, obviously everyone and maybe their mom and dad tell them not to text and drive. And it's tough when you get that alert to not look down. Um, so what, what is it? Is there, what is it that you think is driving this increase and in all of these issues? Like we know this is bad. We know this isn't good yet. We keep doing it. Um, and I, I feel like it has to have something to do with most trips don't end in something bad happening or an accident, right? Yeah. It's one of those behaviors that you can do so many times and it's not connected to an outcome, right? So what we do is we measure all those individual behaviors and then help tie that back. So people understand how that leads to it. If you think about it, right? If every time you 
ate, you decided to eat fast food, every meal you ate fast food, at some point, your pants probably won't fit, right? It's, at some point, it's going to happen. That feedback loop, though, is the key. And that's really the core of the technology that we in, in have invested in over the, the course of the time has been the ability to understand and identify and measure and give that feedback loop in place. Yeah. So, Abby, you're on the product side at Cambridge Mobile Telematics. And I'll, I'll be honest, I think there was a point not that long ago where I did not know the exact definition of telematics. And I'm not afraid to admit that. I hear it all the time. I think it's one of those words we all know we should know. Um, we hear it, data, you know. So what is telematics? And talk a little bit about how you guys are using telematics to uh, work on road safety. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question. Um, so telematics is just leveraging sensors that are on your phone through a mobile app. So most of your apps that you use already use some form of telematics anyway. What we do at CMT, our mission is to make the world's roads safer. So we tackle and use telematics data to just go after that mission. So we pretty much pull data from mobile phones, from IoT devices, whether they're small hardware devices or dash cams, and we pull all that data together. We combine that with state-of-the-art machine learning and AI models and embed behavioral science to basically solve pretty complex problems that are in the space that Ryan was mentioning. So specific to gig market, we really think about risk in different profiles um, and how do we, at the core of it, reduce crash fatalities by leveraging all of this telematics data that we can. So what would be an example of a product that CMT has developed to address this? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, well, one interesting one that Ryan is actually just alluding to is most people think that they are generally great drivers. In fact, actually, let's just pull the audience here. How many of you think you are better than average drivers? Raise your hands. I, okay. I know I'm better than the average, Abby. <laughs> and how many of you think you're below average? Okay. So given the audience size here, mathematically speaking, 49 to 50% of you should have raised your hands for below average, right? But we see that in our data too. Only 1%, a whopping 1% of drivers think that they're below average. So what we're trying to do is basically bring all of that risk data to the drivers. Give them that picture and context for how well are you driving, what's the context around what you're driving, and what you can actually do, actionable things you can do to reduce your crash risk. So I think that, you know, one thing I know that I've seen, like, especially working in the gig economy with drivers who are really paid, I mean, we literally tell drivers that you are paid only when your wheels are moving, right? The faster you can get to your passenger, the faster you can get your passenger to your destination, really, the more money you're making per hour. And so I think in the gig space, it's interesting because you're kind of incentivized to really drive as fast as possible. Um, what have you seen in working with gig companies and sort of like how have they reacted to, you know, some of the products like the safety score? that they might see or, hey, you're harsh braking or accelerating too much? Yeah, no, that's a really good question because sometimes the incentive to go faster may not align with safety, but that's exactly the problem we're tackling with these gig companies. Oftentimes, they don't have a full sense for that risk picture that we can bring to the table, and we can also bring our behavioral science um, uh, studies to the table to kind of say that these are the types of risks that we really want to care about, and maybe these others we don't need to prioritize, and try to build incentives with the gig companies themselves in this partnership to bring driver the bring value back to the driver. So for example, if we are to reduce crash risk, right? The commercial insurance that these gig companies are having to pay are skyrocketing. So we could actually reduce those, provide savings back to these companies who can then put these savings to the drivers and actually incentivize them by increasing their earning rates if they're safer drivers. And Ryan, I think to put things in perspective, I mean, how much is insurance, is bad driving, costing companies? Or I mean, I'm actually really curious. I think one thing you, you mentioned that you work with 21 of the top 25 personal insurers, um, but this is sort of a new thing for fleets and for gig economy and ride share. So it seems like there's, I'm guessing that there's some big money, uh, potential savings uh, at stake here on the table. Yeah, that's huge. And if you think about an insurance company, there's really two driving factors that come to the risk. It's the property uh, that they're insuring, the vehicle itself, and being able to repair that vehicle and put it back on the road, and then any damage that the individual causes either to other property or to people. And what's happened in the gig space, is, and it's been unfortunate that 
the losses have continued to creep up. And these losses ultimately cost everyone in the ecosystem. They cost individuals that are, uh, that are users of these services. They cost individuals that are on the road, that share the road. And ultimately, at the end of the day, the controllable elements is what we do. Right, So we can't control general inflation. We can't control how much it costs to fix a car, but we can control how safely somebody gets there. And you mentioned, right, you only get paid when your wheels are moving. If your car is sitting in a body shop or you don't have it, you're not going to make money. And the thing about this is over time, when this technology continues to roll out and roll out, it will lower the overall costs for commercial insurance. It will improve the overall safety of the platform. And that is a benefit for everyone and that will rise uh, together. So I know we've got a lot of platforms here that are in the rideshare and last mile delivery space. So talk to me a little bit, Ryan, about how you're working with these companies. I think I saw a recent uh, TechCrunch article um, about how you're working with DoorDash on driver safety. And I think that, you know, really, this is sort of one of those areas where a lot of drivers are out there, you know, kind of driving with these normal behaviors, looking at their phone to accept offers. And so I just think that, you know, there's a ton of opportunity to make things safer to, you know, sort of align incentives better, frankly. So talk yeah. a little bit about that. Well, the first thing is measurement, right? So the key is that we can actually measure the elements that lead to crash risk. So if there are contributing factors that happen from the platform that are designed in a way that actually interfere with safety, they might not know that if it's not being measured. So one of the most important things that we do is provide information that we can show when the driver is handling their phone while driving. We can show the average speed that that driver is happening. And then we can bring in contextual data and actually demonstrate how those actual behaviors, those specific behaviors, directly contribute to the crash risk. And so what would a platform then do with that data? I think the real key is providing incentives back to drivers, uh, re redesigning UX in cases where that UX is contributing to a driver taking their eyes off the road while they're moving, yeah. uh, providing overall feedback to those drivers so that they understand the contribution of risk that they are providing to that element. I mean, think about this, right? In an Uber, if you, uh, if you pull up to a certain area where there's a bike lane, you get a notification as a passenger that, oh, hey, there's going to be bikes, pay attention. That's the kind of stuff that we can provide at scale for all sorts of risks that exist that aren't necessarily readily apparent. We provide that information, and then that cycles down through the overall platform. So it seems like it's pretty important to kind of connect the dots, Abby, especially at a product level. Like I have done driving for rideshare and, you know, gotten notifications. Hey, you're breaking, you know, like this or breaking like that. And to me, it was like kind of a nuisance. Like, yeah, I know I'm driving in Los Angeles. There's a lot of traffic, right? But I could imagine if it brought that full circle and said, hey, passengers are rating you lower because you're hard breaking or um, this is actually eating into your miles per gallon because you're hard braking and gas, you know, has come back down a little, but it was up pretty high there for a while. That starts to me as a driver starts to make me think, oh, this is something I actually care about. You know, it doesn't feel like, you know, someone telling me what to do. It's like, no, this is how it benefits me. So how do you think about that on the product side and when you're working with these uh, partners? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I think we try to focus a lot on what's the driver value ultimately, because these kinds of products will not work if the drivers don't understand how whether what the transparency of the product is, how are we measuring braking, what's even the impact of them doing anything about it. So what we try to do is bring all of that context to the driver, try and explain to them about what are the aspects of that braking that's truly risky. If you're just engaging in one weird harsh brake because a cat ran in front of your car and you're braking really hard, that's a different story versus if you're continuously aggressively driving and that's impacting your fuel economy. Or you're continuously engaging in aggressive driving, and that's providing you a low safety score. If you imagine if you living in a world where if you had a good driver score, driver safety score, and you could use that as a way to exonerate yourself when someone complains about you driving uh, poorly. So these are the kinds of ways we can bring driver value back to the driver themselves. I think the, this, this opportunity, it kind of excites me a lot because like right now, you're not always rewarded for being a great driver, for being a safe driver. And I think drivers care about earning more. And so if you can kind of tie that directly, hey, you're a great driver, you're highly rated, you're safe, and you start earning more, and then you get into less accidents, it seems like that coming full circle would be you know, really beneficial for everyone. Yeah, here's an interesting element. Uh, in the personal insurance space, there are drivers that are saving 45% on their insurance 45, 50% on their insurance every single renewal because they're demonstrating their safety. This is real. And that will eventually find itself into the space for sure because the contribution of that individual driver's risk is impacting everyone. So if we can actually change that, 
then eventually the safest drivers will make more money. All right, so what does it take to make that happen as soon as possible? <laughs> Call Brendan. <laughs> Call Brennan. Um, so the last question I wanted to ask you, uh, we've got a lot of great city leaders here today, folks that are working um, in California, Los Angeles, across the country. I think we just had some great workshops um, uh, and discussions kind of around topics uh, there. And I would love to know, you know, to end things here, what are you doing in the public space? Because I think that obviously cities, uh, you know, care and have a role and responsibility in roads and driver safety. And so we'd love to know what you're doing there. Yeah, actually, we did a program right here in the city called LA Safest Driver and gave away, I think it was like $40,000 to the safest driver. It was a single mother that was commuting. And uh, it was a program that we ran that people just downloaded an app, they drove safely, and they got paid for it. And we've done this a number of different times. We're engaging in the space, and we're always looking for ways to bring the technology to more people. Right now, we do a lot in the insurance space. We do a lot in the safety space. We're growing very quickly in the gig space. But the public sector is an opportunity because, again, this technology has a lot of applications. It really is just about how do you deploy it. Awesome. Well, uh, really appreciate you guys coming up here and uh, traveling out to Curbivore. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.